Today we're gonna attempt to design some cool flying Star Trek toys that you'll be able to build. Hey guys, before this video starts, uh, I just wanted to say there's some pretty serious stuff going on in regards to our beloved hobby. Basically, the Federal Aviation Administration is proposing some new rules that if they go through, could be absolutely detrimental to our beloved hobby. Right now, there is a comment period where anybody out there can make a comment to the FAA of why this won't work and why this is a bad idea. So please check out the links below to leave your comment. Also, we'll put some links down there on some videos that we've done on how to structure an effective comment. Time is of the essence. March 2nd is when the comment period closes, so please do us a favor, check out those links. It's gonna help flight test, but more importantly, it's going to help the hobby. It's gonna help aviation as a whole and innovation. So thank you guys so much, and now back to your normal video. All right, friends, we have a new build project, and this time we're gonna be going to Star Trek for inspiration. The new TV series Picard is out, and that got us really nostalgic about the Enterprise. So we're gonna go ahead and take the Enterprise, and we're gonna recreate it in real life. Before we go big and colossal like we did with the Millennium Falcon or the AT-ATs, we wanna make sure it glides. So I got a file here, we're gonna cut it out and get started. So the really cool thing about making chuck lighters, and for that matter, anything that you wanna kinda of start replicating at scale or out there in existence, is you can bring in like a three view drawing like what we have here at the Enterprise. From that point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be copying the top down view, the side view, and all the different features that are really gonna be iconic or that I need to recreate the airplane. Once I have the three views drawn, I can then pull the individual pieces and seam them together how I need them to fold together. From that point, I'm gonna go ahead and tap it so it slides together, and I'm gonna go ahead and build it, and we'll fly it. So we got the pieces. I'm thinking that there's gonna be an elevator pitch issue where this is gonna kinda of overtake the whole airframe. So my guess is that we're gonna to have to angle this, but the first thing we'll do is we'll put it together and we'll, we'll, we'll throw it. Play catch, play catch. All right. So the really cool thing about profile airplanes is that a lot of times people think it'll look flat in the air, but if you get the distinct angles and the distinct features uh, on the verticals and the horizontals, as it's flying through the air, even when you see it as an angle, it'll look a lot more complicated uh, than what it really is. That's what we're gonna try here, and it'll also kind of give us the basic understanding of what's working in our favor, such as like the vertical pieces here helping us for tracking, maybe the horizontal pieces of the engine to help us with, you know, giving us like a stabilizer, and then also, what are the realities of something like this gonna be with, with pitch stability? Is it gonna be like a spinning plate? Is it gonna act like a nutball wing? You know, basically how's it gonna behave? Once we also figure out how it's going to fly, we'll also know where do we put the control surfaces? Do we need to cut the control surfaces on the back piece here? Do we need to put the control surfaces on the actual, you know, I don't know what they call it on the Enterprise, I'm gonna call it the dish. Where do we need to put those pieces to have it control properly? From that point, you just start scaling things up uh, take in mind of where your center of gravity is, and it usually will fly pretty good. What we're doing here is this is what we call dihedral. Dihedral makes it so as the plane banks, uh, the side that's lower will actually produce more lift than the side that's elevated. And it's just simply by looking at how gravity works, with this wing turning flatter, there's actually more wing surface on the lower wing than the higher wing, because when this is turned up, it makes that wing shorter. That naturally brings it back to center. A dihedral is something that usually we'll just build right into most of our plans and then we'll actually start dialing it back uh, as much as we can until it's no longer stable for us. Sometimes we don't need any dihedral at all, uh, especially if it's more of an advanced airplane. If it has stability problems, oftentimes we gotta increase dihedral or we gotta get more angled to more pieces, like this horizontal piece could actually be bent up a little bit as well. Um, but we don't know until we get it flying. There's something so awesome about five pieces of foam coming together to look like something that's recognizable. What do you think, Noah? I like it. You like it? Yep. What I really like is the Enterprise actually has a really nice lifting surface in the back, which I think is going to help us out a lot. Here. Oh. Ah. Yeah. It oh, it's a little <laughs> So if you guys have seen us do big projects, if we just take something that we built and we throw it, it's not gonna do anything good. And there's a good reason for that. There's something called center of gravity that's really important. And center of gravity is gonna make the plane balance at the right point where it'll glide versus just kind of flop around. Uh, center of gravity is not where the plane naturally balances as it sits. It's where the center of pressure is on the wing. So you have your lifting surface, you have your center of pressure. So my guess is that the center of gravity is probably gonna be somewhere right around the middle. Because we gotta take all this surface back here and this surface, I'm just gonna get a dust check. I'm gonna put a little weight right here, and then we're gonna toss it. So before they get any further than this crazy project, I'm gonna tell you about today's sponsor of this video, and that is my good friends over at Raycon. 
So if you don't know what Raycons are, Raycons are the newest wireless earbud out there with premium sound quality for like half the price. So also these are my first earbuds that I've had that are wireless and it's pretty cool because at the end of the day, you put them in and they kind of plug your ears to kind of mask out all the sound that's going on around you. So one of the coolest things about the Raycon earbuds is they start at half the price of other premium earbuds out there and they sound just as good as those top brands. So the latest model, the E25, which is this one right here, they come in all different cool colors, first off. Secondly, you get six hours of play times on a single charge. And this cool case, check this out. Boom, you open it up, it's got little lights on there. It charges it up to four times on a single charge. Another cool thing is it's seamlessly pairing through Bluetooth to your phone. Also, more bass in a compact design, gives you an isolated fit. You can take anywhere on the go, no problem. So if you're like me and you've never experienced wireless headphones or wireless earbuds before, Raycon, first and foremost, is an awesome way to check those out. You can click the link down below to get 15% off Raycons on your first order. Not only gonna help yourself out because you're getting cool wireless earbuds, but you're literally making this content that you're watching right now possible. So big shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this episode and big thanks to you guys for watching. It really means the world to us. Now let's get back at it and get to see what's going on in this project. So friends, this is my son Noah, my oldest son Noah. I actually have a 15 year old and 18 year old son. This is my oldest here. And uh, he's gonna help me toss this back and forth. But also you're gonna help me with the, the hopefully the RC version, right? Hopefully, yeah. And Noah's been a big help around here uh, with uh, actually completing a lot of the projects when I have to leave. Uh, we've been doing a lot of stuff with the FTCA, the Flight Test Community Association, and also things around remote ID. So I haven't always been in the shop. I've either been down in manufacturing or I've been in DC. Uh, trying to get some of these rules and regulations changed in a, in a positive direction along with our great team members Alex and Austin You've been kind of holding down the fort yeah. along with the rest of the team, huh? Thanks. Yep. So if you see our ginger redhead, that's my boy All right, let's see how it goes. Um Can you catch with one hand? Oh, I, I have a feeling it's still I think it's still tail heavy Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> All right, let's get another one. Oh. Okay, that's good. That's good you ready? Ready. Here it goes. That's not bad. That's encouraging. Now, now, where did you actually throw it? Did you throw it back here or up I here? Just, I forget. Try it. Okay. Try it. All right. Okay. Dang. That's actually pretty good. I still think it's tail heavy. It feels a little tail heavy. Ready? Yep. That's better. That's good. Let's go long. I'm going to try to like. Hook it, so just see how it levels up, okay? Okay. Yeah? Does that look like how the Enterprise flies? Kind of... I mean, it flies in space, so, so there's no fly. aerodynamics, yeah. it just... But, yeah. Does, it, does that look like that would be cool? It looks cool. It looks cool. Well, that, that's all that matters. How far do you think it's going to go? I, I'm hoping flagpole. Flagpole? I'm going to just... I'm I thought it was gonna go up here, so I'll cut the difference. Okay, you ready? <laughs> See, in my mind, it looked a lot better than what it's doing right now. <laughs> Bring it up, we'll just keep working. You know what? That could be it. I never checked our crap with this. Like, so if that was going, if that was cracked and going down, that's yeah. down elevator. <laughs> that is cool. Hey, it's it's the Enterprise, man. What do you That's think? Sick. You want you want to catch? Yes, I do. Ready? Yep. Whoa! Oh. Wow! <laughs> That's crazy, <laughs> dude. I, I feel optimistic about that. I'm How many is that? One, two, three, four, Don't five. Don't worry about that. It's not important, man. Batter. Batter. Is this how I throw it? Yeah. Okay, that's a lot better. So what we did is we made it more nose heavy than we had to, and then we made it so these little, our little elevons actually had to pitch up a little bit, so it's kind of fighting that and giving us a glide slope. If you have everything perfectly straight, it's gonna do this a lot more. Let's see if we can toss it to no one. Three, two, one. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> I feel like if you wouldn't have caught it, it would have just been off. Yeah, wait, wait. So here's the goal. If we get this to glide good, I have one more thing I want to try. We have a new, um, I guess, RC power pack slash transmitter control specifically meant for FT stem. It's actually gonna launch through our FT stem line. It's called the Easy Pack. The Easy Pack is a little tiny transmitter, two motors, a stabilization board, and it's perfect for chuck lighters similar to this. Yep. 
if we can make this glide well, that should mean that we can transfer it over to an easy pack and actually make a small RC simple profile enterprise. Enterprise. Sick. Yeah. The old enterprise. All right, Bill, you ready? <laughs> He's just out there waiting for an hour. <laughs> All right, if it goes over your head, yeah, let's let's go for distance. Ready? Three, yep. two, one. I feel like we got something there. Yes, All I feel right. really good about right, it. Let's put an easy pack on. Done. Easy pack time. Oh, can I cover the camera? Thanks. <laughs> All right, so we have the the balance figured out on the the Enterprise, and it's actually just about one third of the wing to uh, to make a balance. So what we need to do here is we need to take roughly where that balance point is, which is right about right here. And I got these electronics from the Easy Pack. Now this is a sample Easy Pack. You got these electronics we've been testing out. These are gonna be in stock soon. But the easiest way that we figure out how to make a model fly, uh, typically is we take all the components of it and then we dump it and we move things around until it'll balance out right. So, Unfortunately, what I see is with everything right at the nose, we're still we're still tail heavy. So that's that's not a good thing at all. A couple things we can do to make it lighter is I can actually peel the paper off, and it's going to make it weaker in the back. But on the flip side, it's going to take a tremendous amount of weight. If you build with our foam board or Adam's Ready board, about 40% of the weight's actually in the paper, not in the foam. So if you peel it, you can make it 40% lighter. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put energy, since everything back here, I'm gonna peel all the paper off this, make it as light as possible, and then we're gonna see how it balances out. Yeah, so I'm gonna leave this one for now. I'm gonna leave this solid because this is a pretty thin area right here. The paper adds so much strength. The way our easy packs work is basically, this is a six axis gyro stabilization board. So when you give it full throttle, it establishes not just like, like what you see, you see with air hawks where it kind of bobble up and down, but it actually establishes a climb angle. So when it hits that climb angle, you know, when you're giving the throttle, it'll kind of go over and then it'll just it'll accept it. When it's mid range, it hits a level of flight. And then obviously when you decay your style, it goes down. It's really cool for our STEM program, but it's also really great for like young kids that want to build a model. Um, no linkages, no controls. If they want to fly with their friends and family or in a gymnasium, they can just put this together or put a model together and instantly go out and fly and have success. Uh, we've tried this on kids as young as seven years old, first time flying, and it's awesome because they don't understand how stalls work and, and stuff. Um, they just know that when they give it left and right, it establishes a certain angle. It's almost like you're flying with level assist off of our aura board, but it's not done with any control surfaces, only with the motors. Here's the problem is, I'm happy you guys, we gotta mute it down or play with the levels, because listen, ah! it's the most annoying sound in the world. Flying speaker. It's like those, Jeremy, insert one of those goats right here. <laughs> so this, this is kind of cool. Basically, this is how it works. We have differential thrust, so as we give throttle, but then we also have gyros, and then when we want to steer it. So it, it's, it's gyro stabilized. And ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Just a little high out there. Touch a nose weight. Just um, a touch of nose weight. Why don't we just extend this? It's gonna look, it's gonna be ugly, but let's see. Let's if hope it doesn't hit the battery. Yeah. All right. Ready? Ready? Alright, so now you're going to throw it, throw it kind of towards Jeremy's head, not totally. Alright, so kind of at Jeremy's head, alright. Yeah, and then I'll try to throw it. Alright, ready? <laughs> What we want to do now is we need to uh, move it further out. So we'll we'll move them further out because then it doesn't have to give you more authority. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was so like it was like <laughs> <laughs> it didn't want to turn too aggressively. No, no. and I hate the noise. <laughs> That's the one thing. And the way that you get rid of the noise is you get the prop away from this, and then you pinch that. <laughs> I think uh, that's an awesome idea, but we just give Enterprise a different paint scheme with a big speaker on top. 
So it just, <laughs> <laughs> it just looks like a giant fine speaker, right? <laughs> <laughs> like if it could, if it could do a, a turn in that small of an area, that's so cool. Typically, this is a pusher. All you do is you just still plug it in, and you just swap the props and turn them. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you you flip it so it's working the right way and like that's good. Okay, I think that's. All right, let's give it another whirl. Oh, you ready? All right. Maybe a little bit faster. All right, this is the one. so much fun yesterday with the Enterprise. We thought before we get Alex out here to fly with us, I'd start working on designing a, I uh, almost called it a Vulcan, Klingon Bird of Prey. I wanna play toss with him and then hopefully do the same thing that we did with this one, make it work on the easy pack, and then we can fly it together. All right, so both planes are done. We gotta set the Enterprise up a bit. We're gonna put some paint jobs on, and Alex should be into work tomorrow. We're gonna have him fly. Dude, this is a look at this. This is awesome. First of all, you feeling better? I am feeling better. Yeah. We're yeah. the family's doing better too, so that's awesome. pretty good. Awesome. And you guys it seem like you've been busy since yeah. I've been gone. This was the happiest accident. We just literally wanted to make this go from a chuck lighter to an RC plane. And then we put the easy packs on and it was like a game changer and everything just went sideways from there. So this is awesome. Now full yeah. disclaimer, I am not a Star Trek fan. I'm I, I called it the Vulcan Bird of Prey, which is not I am a fan of anything that flies, so still amazing. <laughs> uh, and the Easy Power Pack, I've been so yeah, excited about this. Motors. So which one, which one are you gonna fly? Um, I'll tell you what, why don't we start you, why don't you start with this? We're still playing with CG a little bit on them, but it's pretty awesome. Just two, two motors. motors, no control surfaces. Yeah. It's a whole new era, folks. So that means five, six, seven year olds can get in the hobby for the first time, fly with their families and loved ones, and have an awesome experience, so. This is cool. And for that matter, 30 and 40 year olds. Yeah, <laughs> old men can do it. Want to do it out the balcony? Yeah, we're gonna fly out the balcony? Yeah. All right, well, man. Let's just do it, so. Okay. Yeah, cool? Yep. You ready? All right, here you go. Oh, two happy little friends. Ooh, I'm a little bit faster than you. Dude, this flies amazing. Circle in the pole. <laughs> Yeah, the Bird of Prey is my favorite one, man. Oh, it flies great. And that dihedral that you put into it, it just like so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you I win! Him? <laughs> you find your Klingon. I'm gonna run down and get it. Dude, that looks amazing! In this episode, oh. the Klingons win. And this thing just loves <laughs> just, the high I'm alpha. I'm gonna get mine going. I'll be right back. All right, look at that. <laughs> it's just going down. Josh is going down there to pick his up. Meanwhile, I'm just hovering. Like, literally, with a little bit of wind, you can hover it like a real spaceship. I'm gonna buzz Josh. Oh. Oh. Very cold. Dang, that was crazy. I was hovering it there for a second. Dude, this is cool. It's a very different experience. So you're controlling your altitude just with your left stick, which is just your throttle only. So it's very reminiscent of an RC car. Josh is back in the air with the Enterprise. Try not to hit that pole. It loves the pole. There we go. Big yeah, we're right. Look at that. <laughs> it's so intuitive to fly because you real you have left, right, and forward and backward basically. Yeah. Two control well. inputs to, to control everything. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, who's who's flying that Enterprise? All right. I'm gonna see if I can bring it in for a landing. Look at this. Dude, the amount of control on this thing is incredible. No control services, just two motors. Josh, I feel bad. I got the good one. You want to fly this? No, I want to fly with you. Uh, oh. So I didn't know that birdhouse is there. <laughs> there we go. You get out of there. so lady. slow, it's unbelievable. <laughs> well, imagine these in gyms. One reason we launched the Easy uh, Power Packs under the STEM brand is we want these to go into schools, we want these to go into group builds and uh, home schools so that people can design around these. It makes me excited because it kind of fills the gap that I feel like has always been between 
toy grade flying things mm -hmm. and hobby grade flying things. Yeah, you want the principle of flight to be learned. You want to know what throttle does, what you know, pitch and, and yaw and center of gravity. This teaches you all that, but it's it's cheap enough where a little kid can get in the hobby. And any one of our free flight gliders will be able to just have two motors dropped on and it instantly becomes an RC airplane. So how cool is that? And it's super I, cool. I made it, you tail heavy though, it's my fault. No, it's actually kind of nice because at high alphas, I realize it's probably not uh, true to the lore of the bird of prey of how it actually flies, but I like putzing around high yeah. alpha. High alpha is basically when you fly in that nose up attitude like we're doing and a lot of RC aircraft that are capable can do that and it's basically just like you're pulling a draggy airframe through the air and it allows you to fly super slow. It's actually really fun to do. Those forward swap wings do a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying so hard. My flight's so good. I feel bad. I did nothing for this whole video <laughs> except to ruin his day. All right, so I think I see what I did here. I went ahead and made some adjustments. We're going to try it again. Good luck, man. All right, here we go. Stay away from me. <laughs> Bird of prey coming in on your six. Yeah, so, so what did you do to make a flight? So it looks like it's doing it, better. It's doing much better here. So what I did is the first version I built that we had success with, I used the back pods as my elevators. The second version I did, actually I used the circle part and I had like a little reflex there. Well, when I get faster, the back pods would override my elevator uh, on the nutball part and cause me to pitch. So basically I just went back to version one. <laughs> Nice. And then just played with CG and... Dude, it looks like it's doing way, way better. Yeah. See if I can form up with you here. This is by far probably the biggest... Bird, bird of prey coming in. Pew, pew. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you can just take a chuck lighter and make it RC. Just think of what like, this is going to do with kids. Dude, I mean, you're uh, flying good formation. Dude, it looks great, man. They're actually pretty good and comparable in speed now. Look at that. Oh, my battery's dead. <laughs> Nice. Look at that. For thing. once, I'm finally flying longer than you. <laughs> yeah, dude, look at that thing go. It's crazy how a profile figure can still look scale, you know? Look at that. It's just like just sitting there. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. So what, I'd say if you can make an Enterprise fly with this easy power pack, if it, <laughs> there's a lot of possibilities. You can do anything. We have yeah. all kinds of plants to do warbirds, to do civilian yeah. planes. It basically will fly anything, it seems like. Well, and do us a favor. Go to our tech channel and subscribe. It'll be linked down below because that's going to be where we do a lot of the unveilings. And everything we design from the chuck lighters and now the easy packs will actually be on that channel. But we'll show you how to build it and fly it. <laughs> I love the fact that you could just... You're flying with one hand. Yeah. Just turn it with one hand. What a difference. I mean, just taking the elevators from the back of the disc to the back of the nacelles, just hands off. Looks great. You want to try bringing it for a landing? Yeah. I'll you try to catch, catch it? it. Yeah. Look at that precision. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. That's so good. <laughs> All right. We're definitely going to be making some patterns for you guys to go download. I think both the uh, Bird of Prey and the Enterprise. You guys need to build these too. Yeah, as well as many other designs. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. We're doing flying stuff all the time. Stuff that's small, stuff that's huge. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Next time. Yeah.